Welcome back to the Lee channel. Today we have a question from topic 8, energy production, specifically from 8.1. This one I grabbed from the Tskos, uh, I always get this wrong, Skokos, 6th edition textbook, page 327, question 10, I'll do A and B. Before I go ahead and uh, complete the question, I'm going to give you a chance to try it out if you haven't already. And if you don't know what this one represents over here, MeV, that is, well, M for the mega, and EV is electron volts. If you haven't studied topic five, it is, it basically means how much energy, so this is a measurement of energy, an electron volt is how much energy you, you get from accelerating an electron through one volt of potential difference. So that is 1.60 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs, with, which is your elementary charge, multiplied by your potential difference of one volt, giving you that many, giving you essentially 1.60 times 10 to the power of negative 19 joules. Now, if you haven't studied topic five, it's okay if you don't know what this means, but when you do your conversions, this is what you will want to use. Okay, so pause this video now if you want to go ahead and try the problem. Okay, now I'm assuming you want to hear the answer. Here is what we got. Now, number one thing is this word over here, 500 megawatt nuclear power plant. A lot of you are going to get that confused, or maybe not. But when, when your problem says a 500 megawatt nuclear power plant, that is the production. This is what your nuclear power plant is able to do. It is a power rating of it. So that means this Many people will might get confused as your power input, but it is actually your power output. Pardon my pen. Okay, so if someone asks you to build a nuclear power plant of 500 megawatt rating, then that's what they want out of the power plant. That's what they want it to do, not how much it goes in. They don't care about that. They kind of do, but not really. So that is what that one is. Okay, so we have the power output of 500 megawatts, we have the efficiency of 40%. We And the question is asking us, calculate how many fissions of new uranium-335, which is the, uh, the fissionable uh, isotope, are required per second, okay? And they also give you the energy release per reaction to be 200, and 200 mega EV, electron volts. Doing question A. Okay, my pen is a bit slow. Now, what we want at the very end is we want fissions per second, or react, I'm going to write it as reactions per second. This is ultimately, this is our units per one second. This is what we want to get at the end. La 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 la, that's our number. So somehow, uh, some of you might have uh, done some of this unit analysis before, but if you are able to take a few units and manipulate them, you can ultimately get what we want. Also, uh, explain the more conceptual way as well. So we have, first of all, we have 500 megawatts, and that's the output. So we have to convert that back into the power input because that's how we can figure out how much uranium we need in the beginning. So t let's do that first. We will take the 500 mega mega volt, uh, sorry, megawatt. That is our output. And in order to get our efficiency of four of of going backwards, our efficiency of 40 percent. What I'm going to do is I am going to divide this by 0 0.4, representing as 40%. Now, if you had to go the other way, you would multiply by 0.4% if you went from input to output, but we're going backwards from output to input. So we divide by 0 0.4 to get a larger number. So let's go to our trusty calculator. Our trusty calculator, we have 500, and we're going to divide this by 0 0.4 we get 1,250 
megawatts. This is the input that we want. Recall that power is essentially how much energy that you consume, use, blah, blah, transform, all of the fun stuff, energy per unit of time, okay? So that means I can write this as 1,250 megajoules per one second. Or actually, I'm gonna write it like this way instead, megajoules per second. Okay, so I'm gonna write that on this side. This is what we have. Those of you taking chemistry, you might recognize this methodology from stoichiometry. So I have this, I am going to get to re how many reactions per second, which means I need some unit, I need to multiply something in between that is, uh, I have seconds here, second here, I have energy here, so somehow I need megajoules down here, and I want to get reactions on top, I need reactions over here. And luckily we have that, which is in our problem. We have take the energy release per reaction to be 200 mega electron volts, which is energy, which is the amount of energy per reaction. So now we just need to convert it. So let's, um, or we need to convert the mega, mega electron volts. So we have 200 mega EV, and I'm just gonna keep the mega because the mega appears again in our conversion over here. Mega EV, and I'm going to multiply this one by 1.60 times 10 to the power of, of negative 19 joules per one electron volt, okay? So this is going to give me possibly a very tiny number, and I'm going again to my calculator with 200 times 1.6 to the power of negative 19, which gives me 3.2 to the negative 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative 17 joules. Okay, so seven mega, sorry, mega joules because I did not convert the mega joules back. So here I have this many mega joules per fission reaction. So I'm gonna put that down here. In one reaction, I get 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative 17 megajoules. So if I go back to here, then notice uh, I can just divide this because I can take this number, 120, 100, uh, 1,250 divided by this number, 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative 17, which then gives me what I need. So I will take one Two five zero divided by my number gives me 3.9 times 10 to the power of, of 19. Rounding it to, to about two sig figs, or I'll say two in this case, 3.9 times 10 to the power of 3.9 times 10 to the power of 19 reactions per second or if you write just per second is fine. And of course, for IB, your IB exams, you do need to write it in this form, which is 3.9 times 10 to the power of 19, and there's no really uh, SI unit for reactions, so instead, we just write over second, second to the negative one. So this is our answer. Now, stoichiometry, it is, uh, sorry, this unit analysis is a very quick and dirty way of analyzing it. Those of you look at it as like, huh, how does this thing work? You can think of it, about it this way. Uh, way. Another way to conceptualize this. If this is how much energy that you want, okay? It, imagine it's this bar over here. And imagine that this is the amount of energy that you get per one reaction then in order to find how many reactions that will happen, you will need to divide, you will need to see how many of these pieces fit into this giant 
mess over here to count how many reactions that you're going to need per second. So that is the idea of what happens when you need to divide something into a number. You want to see how many of those fit in that whole number. Okay, so that is the reason why you want to do that. And I can write it over here. This overall is your total amount of energy that you get per second. And you're trying to see how many of these little small energy per reactions occur inside this big chunk of the big bar that you see over there. Okay, so that is the idea of dividing. Okay, that's A. B, going on to B, is a specific uh, right over here. I've colored it in, it's a little hard to see. What mass of uranium-235 is required to fission per second? So, then again, we are dealing with the input energy, because uh, input energy, input power, because this is how much mass you need to fission. This is in the beginning. And so far, we do know that we get from our previous answer, unrounded of course, we'll have to check back with my calculator, 3.9 times 10 to the power of 19, we get that many reactions per second, and in the end, we want the mass uranium required to fission per second. So we have, we want kilograms per second, which is mass per second. Now, we know that one one nuclei will give us one fission reaction. Will give us one uh, is one reaction, fission reaction. Uh, pardon for the terrible uh, wording of this, but every nuclei will give you a reaction. So if you, if this is how much uh, reactions that happen per second that you need to happen per second. All we need to do is multiply this by the mass of one uranium nuclei. That's going to give us how much mass uranium you need per second. So, how do we figure this out? What is the mass of one uranium nuclei? Well, it is uranium-235, and uh, 235 meaning that that's the number of nuclei, uh, neutrons and protons that are inside the nuclei. And if you go to your IB data booklet, you will find that the unified atomic mass is 1.661 times 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. So that's kind of like the average between uh, a new uh, a neutron and a proton. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 235 times 1.661 times 10 to the negative 27. This is our quick and dirty way to figure out what is the mass of one uranium nuclei of 235. So after multiplying this, we're going to get 235 actually clear that for a second let me store the previous number so i have it on file i don't, can't lose it stored as z that is a 3.9 okay and then 235 times 1.661 to the power of -27 this is going to give us um the mass per fission react the mass per fission reaction the mass per uranium 235 3.9 times 10 to the power of negative 25 kilograms okay so what we're gonna do that's a rounded number of course i will multiply by the actual one i'm going to take this number and i'm going to put it up here i need to multiply this many reactions by I have 3.9 da, 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 dum, times 10 to the power of negative 25. This is kilograms of uranium that I that we need per reaction. And notice that the reactions cancel out beautifully, which then giving us in the end, we do the multiplication of the two, 
multiply, and in our case, I saved the num the previous 3.9 times to the negative to the 19 as letter Z. Come on, work. Okay, and that gives us 1.5 rounded to two sig figs, about 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative five. One. Oh, that's small now. 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 5 kilograms per second. So, our final answer will come to be 1.5 times 10 to the power of negative 5. And writing in an IB language, kilograms uh, times seconds to the negative 1. Here we are. So, here we have the answers to the two questions and your worked out solution, okay? All right, so the main purpose of this is to show you some language, show you some uh, little tricks that you can use, and especially using the unit analysis, which is a great way for you to work through problems in 8.1. You notice in 8.1, there's a lot of these kind of questions where you have to manipulate your your ratios, the ratios flipping them upside down, whether that means multiplying or dividing. It is a very useful skill for this particular topic, which is why I did this problem. Hopefully this video helped you and hopefully will help you for the other problems that you do in A.1 as well. Check in with the channel later for another problem for A.2. Otherwise, thank you for watching and see you guys next time.